We're back with Talking Law TV and Doug Andrews. Hi, Doug. Hi, Michael. And tonight we're going to talk talk to us about boating accidents. Let's do that. And you used to be with the Coast Guard as a as a commander. No, with the Tybee Light Sail and Power Squadron, named just after the Tybee Light. Other than that, it does represent and serve all of the coastal empire. But we do safe boating. It's a fraternal boating club. We have boating activities, and we teach safe boating to the public. And there is a course coming up very soon. If anybody wants information, call me. It's a great course. We charge only for materials, no charge for the instructors, and you've got uh, captains and other knowledgeable people. If you love your kids and you do boating, get a course. Teenagers are welcome. If you haven't had a course in 10 years, there's a lot that's changed. Come back for a refresher. Okay, and then as an attorney, you also handle boating accidents and, and then DUIs on the water as well. That's right, and an interesting little side note, not that I want things changed, but the DUI law for BAC level for cars is 08. They never changed it for boating, so you could have one more beer. Not that I recommend that, because .10, any beer by an operator is just sheer stupidity on the water because alcohol has a greater effect, so I'm only joking about that, but don't drink and operate a boat, op, uh, drink after you get back on shore. Okay, so when a boating accident happens, who's liable? It can be the skipper who's at the helm. It can also be the boat owner if the boat owner is present or if he has loaned that boat to that person who's gonna operate it and that person is irresponsible and known to be irresponsible. Um, if the owner can share some responsibility, it is possible they can be tagged Obviously, the boat should be insured, so the insurance company hopefully will cover damages. Now, does that work like a car with comprehensive collision? It certainly can. You can get uh, full coverage, liability only, and with uh, expensive boats today, you need to have more than just minimum coverages, and you need to have substantial medical coverage. Okay. What's the standard for, for liability in a boat accident? depends on how much money you're willing to risk of your own assets. Um, I would suggest 250, uh, 250,000 minimum liability policy. Okay, and we have a, an example here of one about to happen where some two people are on a jet ski and one's looking where he's been instead of where he's going. An accident waiting to happen. Um, jet skis have you know, prol proliferated for the last 15 years. Lots of causes of accidents when they hit bigger that's, boats. That's true, and, and people don't understand they'll put kids on these things and there are s regulations and laws about the ages of children that can operate a personal watercraft. Um, 14 and 15 year olds must have a course of instruction which we provide at the Power Squadron. Uh, everybody should have a course of instruction on the PWC that's going to operate one because they are a guided missile and there's no lane markers so you have to look constantly. This guy ain't looking. Yeah. So he would be the one at um, fault in this case, but that other operator, he has some fault too because he could avoid it. Right. And, and is there a speed limit on the water, either in, in, in the waterways or offshore? There is no speed limit signs like you see on the highway. There are, however, some no wake or idle speed only zones where you must go slow enough that you don't cause ripples in the water, basically. For protection of the shoreline or uh, boats that are moored along that area or the yacht basin. So there are limits, but offshore, there's really no limit to the speed. However fast your boat can go is okay. There is a general rule, even with automobiles, general rule of what's well, safe and prudent. Okay, and obviously from our, our other example here, this <sighs> was neither safe nor prudent. No, and you know that ruined their boating day. And I would wager that somebody died because there's no seat belts in this thing there's no airbags so those occupants are not going to remain in their seats after they make contact with that marker uh, they're going to be ejected and it, it's probably ugly yeah and who cites you when you get uh, arrested or or a ticket on the water oh we have all sorts of law enforcement on the water everybody from the coast guard to department of natural resources um, what we call game wardens. Um, and they all have the ability to write tickets. We have Chatham County Marine Patrol. Uh, absolutely, they all can write tickets. So, and well they should if there are violations because the water way should be fun and kept safe by responsible boaters. Okay, you touched brief briefly a minute ago on insurance. Um, 
do you carry, is it the same as a car? Do you have to carry proof of insurance in your boat? Amazingly, there's no um, requirement for that. So you just have to, when you get on shore and say, I think it's in the car? <laughs> <laughs> uh, here's my insurance agent or here's my policy number. Yeah. Do you have to have a, a, a driver's license or something equivalent, a, a captain's license? Well, Georgia, there, there is a move among the states to require licensing of boat operators just like an automobile driver's license but that has not taken effect. Georgia does not require a driver's license, so to speak, to operate a uh, boat, unless, as I said, you're a PWC and a, and a young teenager. But there is a move to require those sorts of things. You can lose your privilege to operate by committing a boating under the influence. You get your boating privilege lifted, but you don't have to have a license, per se, to operate a boat. You should, but don't require it. And, and that's from state to state, they're all the same pretty that's much? That's correct. So you can leave from Maine and go to Florida, with, and, and it doesn't really matter along well, the way. Well, th there's a National Association of Safe Boating Law Administrators, NASBLA, uh, that is trying to get past uh, boating licenses. But I think you can travel from here around the country, and if you're from Georgia, you're not going to have to have a boating license because that state requires one unless you're a resident of that okay. state. All right, real quickly on boating safety, apparently this boat has sunk. Um, who's responsible for removing the boat? Well, in theory, the owner. It's his boat, and I think he should be charged with uh, its cost of removal. We've had some issues here in Chatham County. and there Wasn't was there one in Wilmington Island that was there for years and yes, years? Yes, and, and I was sad to see that the barge that Savannah police had tried to acquire that that fell apart so they could remove some of these derelicts. But like anything else, I think they can tag the owner with the cost of, of that removal. Okay, and, and then fire safety on boats, always a concern. We have one here that's in flames. And uh, since most of them are fiberglass now, it's a toxic smoke that's coming out of there. Yes, and, and it's amazing how fast a fiberglass boat will just burn to the water line. And then we have uh, some sailboats in the area, which are different rules about sailboats versus power boats. That's true. And, That's and true. what can you tell us about some of those? Well, with, with sailboats, some people think that a sailboat always has a right of way. Not true. A sailboat has to yield if, for example, they're not under sail. And all of it is based on common sense. If a sailboat is under sail, it's not as maneuverable as a power boat. If the sailboat is under propulsion by, say, an outboard motor instead of sail, then it has the same rules as a power boat. But common sense is what everybody needs to exercise. Okay. And in the event there's a really bad accident on the waterway and there's a fatality, um, manslaughter, murder, what kind of charges can you face? Those the same as land? Those criminal charges could follow just the, the general criminal law. Uh, you can have a charge for um, homicide or reckless conduct causing a death. Uh, serious injury. If alcohol is involved, you're in serious trouble. Okay. And then as far as just a regular ticket for DUI on the water, um, you're always taking calls like that at your office. Right. And as I said, boating under the influence has the same kind of rules as driving under the influence. You cannot be a less safe impaired operator. How less safe? Any less safe than if you had no alcohol. And secondly, you can't have a prohibited BAC level blood or breath alcohol level, and for boats it is 0 0.10, for cars it's 0 0.08, uh, for under 21 it's 0 0.02, but as I said earlier, you should not have any alcohol if you're the operator of that boat. You need to be completely 100% alcohol free, in my opinion. The law doesn't require it, but I think that's safe because you have a responsibility and boating is so much more tricky than operating a car. You have to look 360 all the time. Okay, well thank you so much, Doug. We'll be back with more Talking Law TV right after this.